Hello again! Last weekend we were finally able to go to the Dolls House Netherlands Fair in Arnhem again. Because of Covid, the last one had been three years ago, I think. And now it is in a new venue in Arnhem, here at the Olympic Training Center of Papendal, in this lovely location in the woods. And of course, the obligatory orange bicycles for the national sports teams who have their training sessions here. But that's not why we're here. We're here for the miniatures. Now, I filmed this after the show as it was raining when I got there in the morning. And here inside the show, I forgot to film an overview of the show until the show almost closed and my phone battery died. So I'm sorry for this poor first impression. I started my tour of the show at my friend Trace Beertema's table, who had some wonderful Hindelope painted furniture for sale. And I think they all sold. But, of course, she's best known for the beautiful marble she sells. And her company's name is Unicorna. Next to Trace was one of my favorite miniaturists, Jens Storp, with his stunning silver items. Now Jens was busy when I was there. There were lots of people waiting by his table, so I didn't film much, thinking I'd come back later, which I did. But then I forgot to film. But oh, these fire dogs, mm, I've been saving up for these. Um, it will take some more time though. I couldn't buy them yet. And this is the work of the lovely Dutch miniature painter Diana Meijboom, who not only paints beautiful paintings, but she also makes wonderful artist studio accessories. Like this wonderful painter's brush rack with paintbrushes. Of course, we all recognize this painting by Johannes Vermeer, Girl with a Pearl Earring. And this is Diana's version of it. Even the back is fantastic. That kind of attention to detail is so fantastic. I love this one. Thank you. How can you get it so thin? With baby powder. I use uh, some baby powder uh, to prevent the sticking of the clay to my fingers. And then, uh, yes, yes, and then you thin. I use this ball end too. I shave the pellets on my finger, this one, this one, with this baby powder, so it doesn't okay. stick and it goes really thin. Mm. And then I glue it to the stem and another one, and up to 80 in a flower. And this, of course, is the wonderful work of Gosia Sukodolska. Her flowers are so beautiful and delicate. And these are some of the pieces in the private collection of Henny Staring Egberts, another favorite miniaturist of mine. Now most of us know her from her stunning ceramics, 
like the tulip vases, for instance, but she also makes beautiful dolls in period dresses. I forgot to film the pieces she was selling because I was buying something, and I'll show you that later. This is the lovely Maria Keuker, who makes wonderful Japanese-style furniture, boxes, food, bowls, etc. And she also makes inlay trays, tea caddies, spice boxes, cellarettes, stools, and so much more. Her table is a bit of a treasure trove, really. The sterling silver cutlery was made by Elze Keuker, who was the mother of Maria and Linda, who you'll see next. And Linda Keuker was the one who made this fun and cheerful beach cabin and all of the accessories. I really enjoyed looking at all of this. And I couldn't resist buying a few items myself. The plans for this beach cabin were recently published in the Dutch magazine Dollshuis Nederland. And here we have someone I've known for a very long time online, but never met in person. The very talented Josh Sagi from Belgium. And his furniture is really good. The carving on these chair frames is just fantastic. And then, of course, there are his wonderful string instruments, more beautiful chair frames, and this work in progress, a 17th century marquetry cabinet. Isn't it just stunning? And Josh also had this beautiful room box on display with more of his wonderful work. And next, I'd like to show you some of the works of Jaap Weitenburg. I am an admirer of his work, and I do have a few of his paintings in my collection. And this time, again, there were a few of his works that I really liked, but unfortunately I was unable to buy any this time. I really like these. Especially this one. <laughs> Yeah. 
And then there are the brothers Bohm, who sell very nice wood for making furniture and floors. And Hubert Bohm is the one who makes all this fabulous furniture, which is made just like the original pieces. And here, Hubert is showing us something he found in an antique shop recently and copied in miniature. It's a table which transforms into a bench, or vice versa. And the last person I'd like to introduce to you today is Marie-Louise Markhorst of Small Scale Miniaturen. She's an all-around miniaturist, as you can see here, but she specializes in copper accessories. And as you all know, I love copper. So yeah, I love this kitchen. <laughs> And this is a room box she made during the Dutch version of one of those TV shows where miniaturists compete. And Marie Louise was one of the contestants. And she did get pretty far, I must say. But more excitingly, Marie Louise got her IGMA artisanship recently. <laughs> that's her, that's her, that's her. Well, I'm home again from the Dolls House Nederland show. And uh, of course, now you want to know what I've bought. So I will show you a few items. Um, which I've bought at the fair, and um, I'll start with the biggest one, I guess, which is from Henny Staring Egberts, and I had my eye on this for a while, uh, but of course I can't buy everything I want, so I have to save up, and um, uh, this is a limited edition, so I got number nine out of ten. She did have another one, which was, uh, I think, number four, but I like this color diff uh, better. Um, and she hand paints everything, so the color sometimes comes out different and uh, um, the pattern comes out different a little bit. So there's the box. Well, no surprises. <laughs> you may have already guessed what it was. And this is A basket, a ceramic basket, of course, there it is. Oh, I, I, I absolutely love it. I really, really love it. And actually, it's called a diaper basket. Um, and this was the ones that were used in um, when a baby was born in the 17th and 18th century. And they had the diapers in baskets. And these, the porcelain ones, uh, or the ceramic ones, they were there for show, uh, just showing off, you know, your wealth, basically. And uh, I will not be putting uh, diapers in there, of course. Um, I'm just going to display it somewhere. But I, I think the shape, I love the shape. And, you know, the pierced sides. And then there's the vase decoration in the center. And uh, yeah, really, really like this piece. So, and sometimes, uh, well, you know, you have to 
spoil yourself. And that means for me, I don't go to the hairdressers. <laughs> I don't buy new clothes. Um, I buy this, these kinds of things. So yeah, very, very happy with this one. And the next thing I bought was from Lindy's Miniatures, or Linda Keuker, um, which you saw that those were the beachy miniatures. And I actually bought some beachy items, uh, some flip-flops. And I really, really like that. I just couldn't resist it. Uh, maybe it's because I wear a lot of flip-flops in the summer. I think they're very comfortable and cute. So... Yeah, they're so much fun. And they even have the, the little back things. Yeah, I like those, but <laughs> I have several. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So, yeah. Sometimes I buy things that uh, appeal to me personally or things that I have myself a lot a lot of those things that I wear or and and at other times I buy things that are in real life would not be my cup of tea at all which is kind of fun to have different uh, items but in miniature a lot of things are much cuter <laughs> than in real life or they may appeal to me or they may just fit another project which um, I wouldn't want in real life or you know yeah very cute really like those and I also got where are they oh here some of these um and they'll go into the workshop room and here's the green ones. Now, other than that, the beachy things, I don't have anything beachy that would not look right in my house. But these, I think, would look cute. And of course, the flip-flops, they'll go anywhere. <laughs> And this little box, I thought it was so sweet with the flowers. And um, uh, I have several of Maria Koker's boxes already. And this one was cut with laser. But um, yeah, I just thought it was very cute. Her other boxes are all handmade. Uh, well, this is handmade as well, but used with a laser. I just thought it was so sweet. Such nice detail. And then I bought a few more pieces from Elisabeth Coseret and I bought some of her white porcelain pieces. I love her, her pieces because they have, they're all handmade and, uh, well, they've got wonderful shapes. Oh, I got another one here. This um, vase. That was very nice. And I already have um, loads of them in my uh, kitchen. But you can never have enough, especially these shapes, like use them for vases and, you know, so a sauce boat. They're really, really good. And this one, I think this one's going in the bedroom, though. <laughs> That's a little jar with a lid. And here's a ginger jar with a lid. And... Um, yeah, I really love those. And I also bought from her this beauty. Look at that piece. It's a huge uh, jug. Uh, really, really stunning. That's the first thing that I saw on her stand and I grabbed it immediately. I just, I absolutely love it. The color is beautiful. The shape is so interesting. And she said it was very difficult to make and a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I can, I can believe it. This, 
to apply that and yeah I really really love that piece and I also got from her and I would love to buy more for I mean I could stay there for an hour and pick out stuff from her stand but I also bought these uh, oriental style teapots now I love teapots so I have quite a collection of them already um, but I don't I didn't have anything like this yet and I thought the shape again beautiful shape and beautifully made love that one and here's another one again so beautiful yeah I love her work she's really really good love it so yeah <laughs> More for my collection. Now, the last thing I would like to show you is this. And I know it's a little bit controversial because this is ivory. And it's antique ivory. It's recycled ivory. Uh, but still, I know. Um, I just think it's a waste to throw it away if it if it's, exists already and they're made from broken pieces um, so, yeah. And this is made by Vonas Miniatures, also a Dutch maker, a husband and wife team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love their work. I can't turn it on its side, so... <laughs> because the fruit will fall out. So, and I have uh, some other pieces by them. This is a piece with a heart. this is turned on the lathe and the lady of course is carved and it is a okao and you see examples of these in Dresden in Germany where they've made um, copies of the ones that they have there and I've also got this beautiful little fan which has an ivory handle so that was most of what I bought I did buy some more pieces some smaller pieces um, and I'm sure I'll show you those um, over the weeks that follow not oh I forgot one which I'm sure you'll like uh, I bought from Hosia Sukodolska, I bought some grapes, bunches of grapes. And I didn't buy any flowers this time because I just recently bought a lot of flowers. Uh, so I need to place those in my doll's houses first. But I saw these and I, I really like them. So they will go into one of my scenes soon. I think I have to do a little bit of a reshuffle to get this, this, there. Either side, but um, these other pieces, well, maybe this one would work. There we are. Still need something here. We'll see. It's a bit tall, so I'll have to work on the composition, but it will get there. We'll see.
Until next time.